Hey everyone, this is a bit flashback, and I just picked myself up a Nest Pie case, and I've been debating on getting one of these for a while because I have so many other miniature Nintendos, but I'm glad I got this case. I like it quite a bit. And if you're interested in getting one of these, I got this from banggood.com for right around 20 bucks. I'll leave a link down below along with a 10% off coupon. So this Nest Pie case is made by a company called Retroflag, and it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3, the Pi 2, and the B+. So inside the box you get the Nest Pie case, you get a screwdriver, and the manual. And the screwdriver is just a small fill up screwdriver, that's all you need to put the case together. And here's a look at the manual, it's got some illustrations in it to show you how to put it together. It's pretty straightforward. So the case itself is pretty impressive. This isn't a 3D printed case, this is a mold injected case, so it's got a pretty nice finish. It even has a functional power and reset button, but I should mention these operate as kill switches. So what that means is when you hit the power button or that reset button, it actually disconnects the power and turns off the console without any shutdown script. But there is a mod available to make the reset button function as a proper shutdown switch, and I'll talk about that more later in the video. And here's a look at it side by side with the Nintendo Classic Edition, and it's got quite a few similarities. We got the functional power and reset buttons, we got the LED light for the power button, we got the two controller ports. Even the colors are very similar. And the Nest Pie case is just a little bit smaller than the Classic Edition. But as far as operating systems go, they're quite a bit different from each other. Now let's compare it with the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And just like the original, that lid actually opens, but there's no cartridge slot. This just gives you access to more USB ports and an Ethernet port. Now let's take a look at the side of the consoles. And on the original Nintendo, we have the access to the audio and video ports. And on the Nest Pie case, we have access to the micro SD card. Then on the back of the Nest Pie case, we have our HDMI output, the AV output, and our power input. Then on the bottom of the Nest Pie case, we have this little holder right here that we can unclip and we can store micro SD cards inside here. In the original Nintendo, it actually has something very similar looking. If you remove this cover right here, that gives you access to an expansion port that was never utilized for the Nintendo. There was talks of using this expansion port for modems or multiplayer devices, but those projects never got up and running. But as you can see, the Nest Pie case does a very good job of being true to the original Nintendo. Okay, it's time to go ahead and assemble the case, and when you get the case to start with, it should not be screwed together. You should just be able to pull it apart. And inside the case, you're going to have a bag of screws, and we're going to be using all these. There's going to be six silver screws and two black screws. You're also going to need a Raspberry Pi 3, or the Pi 2, or the B Plus board. So there's going to be three different connections that are going to be inside the Nest Pie case that's going to be connecting to the Raspberry Pi 3 board. There's going to be an Ethernet connection, which you may or may not ever use this, but I'm going to go ahead and connect it since it's here. There's going to be a USB connection, and you can connect that to any of the ports on the Raspberry Pi 3. Then with that last connection, we're going to wait to plug that in until we get that Raspberry Pi 3 board in place. And the board can only go in one way, and when it's in there properly, it'll line up with the ports on the back of the console. And as you can see here, you don't actually use the power input on the Raspberry Pi 3, you use the power input that's on the Nest Pi console. Now it's time to plug in that last connection, and that's going to plug in all the way to the right if you're looking at the front of the Nest Pi case. And you want to be careful and make sure you have this plugged into the proper place, because if you have it plugged in wrong, you could cause damage to the Raspberry Pi. So again, if you're looking at the front of the Nest Pi case, it connects all the way to the right with those red and black wires closest to the front of the console. Now it's time to secure the Raspberry Pi 3 board, and we're going to use two screws on the front of the board located right here. So your kit should come with 8 screws total, and 2 of the screws should be just a little bit shorter. And that's what we're going to use to secure that Raspberry Pi 3 board. There's also an optional fan connection if you want to help keep that Raspberry Pi 3 board cool, located right here. But if you only plan on playing 8-bit or 16-bit games, the fan's not really necessary. Alright, now it's time to put the top of the case back on. Then we're going to flip the case over and install the 6 screws. So I'm just going to drop those inside the holes and get them all tightened up. Okay, we're all done assembling the case. Now it's time to install RetroPie on a micro SD card and get your system up and running. And we have nice easy access to install that micro SD card. And to start using your Nest Pi console, you're going to need a USB controller like this, or you can use a wireless controller like this Wii U Pro controller, which is probably my favorite to use with RetroPie. And you should also probably invest in a USB keyboard. It's really hard to navigate through some of the menus without a keyboard or to type anything. There's also a mod available now for your Nest Pi console that allows you to mod that reset switch and make it function as a proper shutdown switch for RetroPie. And I will be doing a video about this mod in the near future along with a custom RetroPie image with that shutdown script pre-installed. And the mod's fairly simple, it just involves soldering four wires, so if you have a little bit of soldering experience you can get the job done fairly easy. 
You can also check out Glenn from Glenn's Retro Show. He's got an awesome video that kind of explains this mod. It's a little bit different than mine, but the end result's still the same. And I'll make sure to post Glenn's YouTube video link down below. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support or sponsor the channel, you can now find me on Patreon. See you next time.